Okay, welcome. This is the Flip Classroom and we're going to be looking at this one all about taking the new models and adapting them further. So the first thing I wanted to do was look at model selection. So here's the slides. Let's have a look at model selection. So we've got a load of potential models we can consider and we're going to consider linear models at this point and we've got two ways we could choose how to choose our best model we can choose the algorithm we're going to use to choose the best model and also we can do a choice of heuristic and by heuristic i mean how i'm going to judge how good a model is this lecture will be all about algorithms next one will be about heuristics so the first one I'm going to talk about is the forward selection algorithm and the heuristic I'm going to use at this point is a p-value, a nice easy one that you've already seen before. So the first thing we could do is we could start with what we're going to call the null model. In your terms it's just going to be basically you're going to take the response variable and you're going to regress it on a single term which is going to be an intercept. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at all the other possible predictors I could have. Sometimes in data science you'll hear them called features and we're going to look and say what is the p-value for including that term if I include that term in the model? You look at the smallest of them p-values, and then you, if that smallest value is less than some cutoff point, so usually we look at them and go, are any of them p-values less than 0.05, you add that term to the model, you then refit the whole model, and now you look at all your p-values, and you keep doing it until the smallest p-values of the things not in the model is greater than 0.05. Next one, we're going to do the backwards. Similar concept, but now we start with the biggest model we can, and then we go, what's the p-value if I remove that term? If the largest p-value is larger than our cutoff, so any of the p-values, if they're larger than 0.05, I remove, refit my model, have a look at the p-values, keep doing it till all the terms that are left in the model have a p-value less than 0.05. Now we're going to do a stepwise. So we did the forward where I started with the smallest and built up, or the backwards where I started with the biggest and built down. This one we sort of take a step forward, a step back. So I begin with the null model. What I do is I'm going to start with a very liberal, instead of 0 0.05, I might be do 0 0.2, 0 0.15. And I go and say, can I add something in? Once I've added something in, I then now look at the model and say, could I take something out? But the taking out is all in a much stringent 0.05. The adding in is 0.2 or 0.15. And I keep doing that. I keep building up and taking off. And I keep doing that until there's no other ones added. So why do I do this? Well, let's think about it. This is, let's think about the forward. Here is all my possible models. I've got three predictors, x1, x2, x3, and a single response variable y. So this is my full model. So first of all, the forward. The forward, I'd start here. And I say, do I need to add any terms? I could go, could I add x1, x2, x3? If I choose that, yes, I should add x3, I'd go down here. And now I go, could I add in x1 or x2? Yeah, keep going down. The backwards, I would start down here and I say, can I remove a term? The step, I take a step forward and then can I remove it? Take a step forward, can I remove something? So what's the advantage of the step? Well, let's think about the scenario where I start over here and I add it in this term. Once I get to this point and go forward, it might be that I went down here. I might never get over here to this model. I might miss it. This one actually might be really, really good. This might be the top model, but because of the way I did it, is X3 is really good. But once I start adding the extra terms, I miss out on this model over here. The stepwise explores this space more. So in the forward, you can only basically take a single path. Once you make a decision, you've limited your possible models you can consider. Same with backwards, but by the step, you can explore the area much better. A couple of things we should do though, is when we're exploring these models, we should maintain what we call the principle of marginality. And there's a couple of versions of that, but the general version is if I have an interaction term in my model, then any of the terms that form this interaction must be included. So if I had an interaction term involved xi1 and xi2, in my model, I should always have xi1 and xi2 as main effects. So if you have terms in 
you have to also keep in the terms, even if they're not significant, keep them in to the model. We'll see that again and again. That's it. See you next time.